Okay, welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us for another episode of Alps in Brief. My name is Chris Newbold. I'm Executive Vice President of Alps, and today I'm sitting in downtown Seattle in the offices of the Washington State Bar Association with a colleague and a friend, Paul Littlewood, who's the Executive Director of the Washington State Bar Association, and uh, I want to talk about a subject that is kind of trending nationally, which is um, thinking about um, how we, we, we battle access to justice issues and one of the innovative programs that the Washington State Bar is involved with, which is the Triple LT uh, program, the Limited Legal License Technician. Um, and before we start, Paula, if you could introduce yourself, your role, and, and, and what the Washington State Bar does. I am Paula Littlewood, Executive Director of the Washington State Bar Association. I've been here about 15 years. Um, the Washington State Bar is what's known as an integrated bar, so we are the regulatory agency operating under delegated authority from the Washington Supreme Court to regulate all licensed legal professionals in the state of Washington. And we are also the professional association supporting our members as they do their work and serve the public. Okay. And one of the issues that we're um, kind of really focusing on today is the issue of access to justice. We know that, you know, 80 to 90 percent of, of folks uh, with civil legal uh, problems in the United States, particularly those of low income, never receive help from a lawyer. And I know that one of the things that you've been trying to do as part of your job here in Washington is to think about that challenge and to come up with solutions. Um, one of the ways that you've done that is, is a program that if you go out to the National Bar Association, regional bar gatherings, it's hard not to hear about this particular subject that you, get, that you all are at the forefront of. So talk about what, what the Triple LT program is and, and why it's unique and, and why it's uh, just kind of different when you think about the context of alternative legal services. Mm -hmm. um, probably the first thing I'd say is it's not a program. Uh, it's a license, and so what we are doing in Washington State is licensing the first independent paraprofessional in the legal profession in the United States. So in many states, you might be familiar with a nurse practitioner in the medical field. Nurse practitioners in many states in our state are licensed to work independently of a doctor to give medical advice up to a certain point, and then when they reach the edge of their license and the scope of their responsibility that they're licensed to do, they refer the patient on to the doctor. Triple LT is the exact same concept in the legal field. So a triple LT is licensed. It has a they have a limited license, hence the name, limited license, legal technician, um, to work independently if they choose, uh, open their own practice separate from a lawyer, to provide legal advice in certain practice areas. So the, the rule, the Supreme Court rule that creates this license is designed to be applied in various practice areas. The first practice area that the Triple LTs are licensed in in Washington State is family law. One of the things that the Supreme Court's Triple LT board is exploring now is what the next practice area will be because it's envisioned that some Triple LTs may want to get licensed in multiple areas or there may be people that aren't interested in family law but if uh, a different practice area comes online then they may choose to become a Triple LT in that practice area. Um, I think it's important to distinguish the Triple LT from other alternative service providers that we all are familiar with nationwide. We have document preparers, we have courthouse facilitators, we have the New York Navigators who are all critical in helping you know, serve the public. But the difference with the Triple LT is they are licensed to give legal advice, just like Chris and I are as lawyers. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually don't consider Triple LTs non-lawyers because they have a license to practice law from the state Supreme Court, just like I do. Um, it's just that they have a limited license and can only provide services up to a, a certain amount, and then by court rule are required to refer the client on to a lawyer. Okay, and what was the, what was the catalyst for the program? Who provided kind of the mm -hmm. thought leadership in coming up with the concept? So it, it's sort of a two-track uh, approach that it came in on. Um, there was a Supreme Court board, the Washington Supreme Court had a board known as the Practice of Law Board, and they were looking at unauthorized practice of law. 
and how can we deal with the unauthorized practice of law. So, so that was sort of one track that, that brought us the Triple LT because they were trying to figure out how do you provide to the consumer qualified and regulated qualified and regulated legal service providers. At the same time, our Washington Supreme Court had commissioned a civil legal needs study which um, quantified the unmet need, and Chris referenced this at the beginning of our talk, the unmet need in our country. Um, the civil legal needs study, we knew we had a lot of unmet need, um, but it gave us an actual quantification that 80 to 85 percent of low and moderate income folks were going without the representation that they needed in critical civil matters. So between those two things, um, the need to get more qualified and regulated providers into the marketplace and the staggering unmet need, um, the Practice Law Board worked for about eight years um, and recommended to the Washington Supreme Court the creation of this license, the Limited License Legal Technician. Uh, license and the court adopted the rule in 2012 and we were off to the races. Okay, and when, when was the first class of, of uh, those applying for licensure? It was about two years later. So remember um, for the, so, so when the court created the license, they also created the limited license legal technician board because the Supreme Court needed a board that would figure out sort of how the, um, you know, how the how the license would run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as the court's regulatory agency, we staff and fund that board. So we work together because we're the regulator and they're the Supreme Court's board setting all the policy. So it took two years to, I mean, if you think about what the Triple T board was doing, they were creating a new profession out of whole cloth. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the chair of the Triple T board talk about it, he'll say, it wasn't like we could go to California or New York and pull their rule off the shelf and say, okay, let's modify it to fit in Washington. So um, they had to define the scope of family law and what these folks would be allowed to do. Uh, we had to d design a curriculum to train them. We had to design a bar exam. So, you know, we were creating a whole profession. So it took about two years um, until we actually had candidates in the process being trained. Mm -hmm. um, so we're about 2012, 2018. We're, what, six years in? Um, and right now we have 27 who are licensed. Um, we have another 60 or so that are completing education and um, admission requirements. Um, and then we probably have a couple hundred coming up through um, the community colleges. It's a, the education app happens at two levels. There's a, what we call a core education at the community college level, and once they complete that, then they can move on to the practice area education, which is offered um, through... Uh, the University of Washington Law School. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, yeah, so we've had people say to us, "That's all you have," and we're saying, "Well, you know, we should, we are starting from ground zero. So, yeah, I think once it starts picking up momentum, we'll. Well, one of the things that we found very interesting about about the the um, the, the class of of folks that you are licensing is just, you know, they they you required them to have malpractice insurance, mm -hmm. and Alps as as the endorsed carrier of the Washington State Bar. I um, actually found it to be a very appealing risk group um, because of the extensiveness of the educational requirements that you place upon these folks who aren't going to law school, but you know I would venture to say are actually more qualified and trained coming out of their program than most folks coming out of law school. So I wanted you to just, just kind of mm -hmm. comment on just the, the extensiveness of the training that mm -hmm. your triple LTs have to engage in to, mm -hmm. to earn this distinction. And one of the University of Washington law professors said the exact same thing when we came to the end of developing the family law practice area um, curriculum. He said, uh, these folks are going to be better trained in family law than our JDs coming out. Which, you know, I went to law school um, and never took family law, and I could have started practicing family law the day I received my license. Mm -hmm. um, so the family law training is 15 credits. So five credits are just basic family law, probably what a lot of us, if I had, would have taken in law school. <laughs> um, and then the next 10 credits drill down uh, very deeply into the actual scope. Um, one of the most important things, and this is where I and Chief Regulatory Counsel and Chief Disciplinary Counsel were probably most involved, was in this training aspect, because we wanted to make sure these folks understood the scope of their authority. 
and most importantly when they'd come to the edge of it and gone beyond it. So actually when we first took the curriculum to the LLT board, the LLT board said, wait a minute, you're training them to do things they can't do. And we said, yeah, we have to expose them <laughs> to things that they can't do so they understand when they've crossed the line. Um, and each class is twin taught by a law professor and a practitioner, which when I think back to my own law school experience, if somebody would have been giving me the doctrine and at the same time then saying, and here's what it's going to look like on the ground, <laughs> mm -hmm. would have been really helpful. Um, Gonzaga is also helping teach the classes, so and I would be remiss to not thank ALPS for stepping in. Um, as Chris mentioned, we do require malpractice insurance for the triple LTs. Um, we do not yet in Washington require that for lawyers. Um, but we had talked to a couple of insurance carriers and they said exactly what Chris said. Huh, these guys are less risk, better trained, narrower scope, mm -hmm. right? Whereas lawyers can sort of <laughs> go everywhere. Go everywhere. So, yeah. um, so we thank Alps hugely for stepping in and believing in the license and believing in um, the caliber of the, the providers we're turning out. So what would you, what would you, as you think about the future, what, what do you think is the outlook for the, for the, for the program and for the, for the, uh, for the license, for the license? <laughs> um, because I, I, I do think it's, it's one of those that's very unique nationally is, is a lot of people are kind of keeping mm -hmm. their eyes on it. Mm -hmm. um, talk about just what your outlook is for the license here in Washington and what you see kind of down the road in terms of the many speaking engagements you've done nationally in terms of thinking about you know, mm -hmm. where other states may go on this issue? Well, um, there's a number of states that are looking at it. Uh, Utah's probably the closest. Um, their rule is drafted. Um, I think they're working on development of their exam. Um, I think they're calling them limited license practice. I can't remember. A mm -hmm. little bit different name. Um, Oregon has had two task forces recommend that they do it, so we'll just wait and see if um, when they get to putting rubber to the road. Uh, New Mexico was looking at it. California jumped in the water right behind us. They were moving pretty quickly, um, but I think they've got other issues they're dealing with right now. Uh, Minnesota was looking at it. Florida, um, I'm trying to think, Montana looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you where we've been traveling a lot is Canada. We've probably been to four or five provinces now. They're quite interested in it, um, a number of their provinces. And I think in particular areas, um, states where there's a lot of a rural population, because we all know it's getting more and more difficult to recruit lawyers into the rural areas. And so I think um, there's a lot of states in some of these provinces that are seeing that the LLT might be an option to serve rural areas um, because the nice thing for the triple LT is they since they go to a community college for the first part of their education they get a stay in their community right mm -hmm. and then the practice area education that's offered by the law school is streamed so you can actually be anywhere to take the law school classes they're synchronous so it's not like they're downloading an iPod or what a podcast at um, <laughs> three in the morning they're you know, we've taught in the classes, it's very interactive. The students are there, they're chatting at you. and um, so, so I think a lot of states and definitely these provinces um, are looking at a possible solution for serving rural populations. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's surprised you about the license? Or as it's now kind of moved from concept to regulatory infrastructure to yeah. an actual class of folks that you're regulating? You know, there were a couple of things. Um, one was the collaborations that developed. Um, one was our three law schools saying, don't, don't have us each develop a curriculum, we'll do it together. And so that was really fun. We worked with the three law schools in the state to develop the family law curriculum. And then the collaboration between the community colleges and the law schools. So there were sort of these collaborations that we never anticipated that were really fun because everybody sort of came together and said, how are we going to make this the best license possible? Um, and it sort of created a culture of innovation in Washington. Once, once you know, there was, as you know, I mean, the bar and a lot of people were very opposed to this right up until the bitter end. Um, and once the Supreme Court spoke, I mean, once the Supreme Court passed the rule and said this is the direction we're going, we, we need to do this for the public, um, it really, in a lot of ways, created a culture of innovation. We had people coming to us saying, have you thought about the Triple T in this area or that area? We had the Washington Association of Prosecuting Attorneys came and said, you know, there's some 
you know, parenting things where we think triple LTs might be helpful. The ALJs have approached us. Um, so that, that mm-hmm. was kind of exciting. Um, not to say we don't still have, <laughs> you know, people that question the idea or are suspicious. Um, county bars have, been, have started embracing them. They're members of the county bars. Uh, the Washington State Bar two years ago, the Board of Governors voted to make Triple LTs members of the, of the bar. So, I mean, that's all been super exciting. Yeah, so. yeah. I thought it was I- interesting. I mean, you and I, we were observers of legal trends, mm-hmm. right? And our profession is not the fastest to adapt to emerging challenges that society, you know, thrust upon us. I thought it was interesting going back to the Supreme Court order that that uh, started. The pro the uh, the license. Um, if you if you if you um, here's the quote: We have a duty to ensure the public can access affordable legal and law related services, and that they are not left to fall prey to the perils of uh, of the unregulated marketplace. Right, and and it just seems like that's the type of you know they the, your Supreme Court frankly went on a limb a little bit and said you know what. We think that there's something to be said for creating this opportunity, mm-hmm. um, and it's 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 kind of interesting to now watch what the kind of the six years later where you're at now and, and, and where you hope to go. Yeah, well, as we tell every place where we speak about it, come on in, the water's fine. <laughs> well, good. Thank you, Paula. We appreciate your time. It's a fascinating subject, and as we think about access to justice and alternative legal services, I mean, it's clearly clearly an issue that that, that observers are going to be watching from around the country. Great. Thank Thank you. you.